Perfect. All right. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everybody, and welcome to the Monday, 30th September 2019 meeting of the IPFS uh, Documentation and Developer User Experience Working Group. Um, I am your official, unofficial host for the week, Jessica. And without any further ado, let's just run straight into the agenda. It's going to be sort of a modified agenda this week. Um, let's run through, um, actually, I'm, I'm going to run through everything except the docs platform tech stack framework stuff because Chris, you will hit that harder and in more detail because you have all sorts of interesting things to say. Um, first up on the agenda, recurring item of the OKR, Q3 OKR wrap-up and Q4 OKR definition. Um, we are done with that. Our Q4 OKRs are in the official spreadsheet. You can read them either in their truncated form by going to the docs repo, github slash ipfs slash docs. You can find the summary version of that as well as the link out to the official spreadsheets. You can see where they fit into the rest of IPFS OKRs in general. Um, I also believe that the discussion Chris is leading in a few minutes will actually wrap up one of our Q3 OKRs. Um, so there may be some slight amendment to that to go from 95 to 100% finished achievement unlocked, all that good stuff. Um, so those exist there. Um, skipping the platform discussion for a sec. Um, recurring item, hire a documentation specialist that continues to be recurring, um, being that this is a public call and there are confidentiality of applicant type issues. If you have questions about that, feel free to hit me up and we can discuss in more detail, but it continues. Um, tactical hot fixes. Um, I have also, since we're, we're wrapping up the quarter as of today, I have taken, you may notice, all of the things that were previously labeled OKR hotfixes in the repo and changed them to be labeled for um, content enhancements. Um, you can read a little bit more in detail about that um, in the readme of the repo itself um, to get a little more insight into our labeling structure. Everything that had been labeled a hotfix in Q3 is now labeled a content enhancement. It's also been t-shirt sized and given um, a rough indication of difficulty. So particularly for folks in the community, um, this should make it a whole lot easier for you to pick up issues depending on what your interests are, how much time you have available, and so forth. Um, again, happy to answer any questions anybody may have on that, but um, that, that should be relatively easy. I'm gonna save us time um, so I'm going to do much more detail now. Um, is there anything we need to know about metrics this week, or are we okay just kind of letting that letting that be for this week, Chris? Yeah, not so much. Um, okay. Yeah, we we should evaluate that separately, and I think that actually will justify its own call. Um, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And and we do um, have have plans this week to blow out the um, Q4 OKRs into more discrete GitHub issues. Um, so right now everything is set up. All the OKRs that you see in the top level of um, on, in the readme of the repo are now associated with issues labeled epic in um, the docs repo. Um, the plan this is is to over the course of this week blow that out into more discrete bite-sized pieces which um, particularly for folks in the community will make it a little bit easier to track our work because it goes along. So. Um, Jill, did you have um, stuff from ProtoSchool you want to share? Uh, not much in continuation to the last week so I've just I've kept working on the new tutorial. I've drafted a couple more uh, more lessons and I'm having a bit of trouble on the last one but hopefully talking to some of the more um, of the people working on the IPFS inner workings I'll be able to clear some some doubts and we carry on from there. Awesome, awesome. Sounds like you're, you though overall are really making good progress, especially for being as, as new to, the, to this project as you are. That's really awesome. Um, and then obviously if there's anything that any of us can help you with while Terry is at offline camp um, and recovering from offline camp, you know, please, please be in touch. But great, great, great. Um, anything else that we want to add before we launch into the platform discussion? Jill, do you already have connections to everyone you need to talk to on the IPFS side, you have someone's brain to pick. Yeah, uh, I'll probably just talk to Hugo. He's been my contact point for any questions I have. All right, cool. Well, if you if you need other people to to reach, just ping. 
and happy to connect you to whoever is needed. Okay, thank you. And Great. sorry, if you have, if, if you uh, want to bounce anything off of, of me from a, you know, design usability, whatever perspective, I'm, I'm, I would be super excited to, to poke around at anything. Are, is that is that um, are are you working mostly locally, or is that is a branch being? Uh, I'm working on a branch. I don't know if I'll have uh, many usability questions because I'm just using the templates for the lessons we already have. Uh, but, Content uh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that once I have the the drafts for all the lessons I have planned. Uh, I'll probably ask uh, whoever's available to check them out and see if they make sense and get some feedback from there. Awesome, thanks. And also a good uh, excuse to actually start to, you know, get to know each other and work together. That's my evil plan. <laughs> <laughs> Your evil plan for collaboration? New friends. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool, cool. Well, um, Chris, over to you. Excellent. Well, thank you for leading the introduction. Um, comes that time of the week when I switch on my screen. Let's move over to this one. Uh, all right. Um, right, OKRs, <laughs> Q3. We'll be saying goodbye to this one very soon, but uh, in preempt where we're at so far, I've put this as a 0.99 because I'm essentially just going to summarize uh, what, um, what I've been going through in the last couple of weeks and uh, where we got to with uh, the work that I was doing last week uh, to finalize some of the prototypes and make sure that we uh, are in good state for uh, kicking, uh, kicking off Q4 with some uh, prototyping in the actual platform of choice that gives us the most potential for, uh, for what we uh, believe will um, help the team out with the documentation and the de developer experience. Um, the primary thing I'm writing up right now is just the, the actual overall summary for this. Um, uh, a little preview of it here in the markdown. Um, what, I'm, what I'm going through is uh, I'll, I'll basically post an issue uh, link to this once uh, it's up on GitHub, but I'm trying to flesh out the, 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 full, the full summary. But I'm, I essentially broke it down into the, the three primary platforms that I've been testing over the last uh, couple of weeks and um, which has been predominantly around Docusaurus um, and their uh, updated um, uh, version branch of where they're going with this. Uh, Gatsby being a framework of choice that we've used uh, for other products in, in the company but also something that works well with our experience within uh, PL and uh, typically towards the React framework side and new to the arena was kind of press and evaluating that based on something that we um, uh, has a lot of potential from a documentation standpoint because it gets a lot further early on um, and uh, ended up evaluating and breaking those down into uh, sort of sections of um, I would say primary concern so things that we want to achieve from um, from a product perspective here is that we are essentially not here to have as much developer resource time into building a documentation platform. We want to make sure that we are adding as much value to the IPFS docs uh, output and helping users achieve and maintain and build applications using IPFS. So uh, with the priority of that in mind, it's like I want to make sure that we are spending as much effort and resource on delivering the, that focus and not so much on specking out and building out all the bespoke functionality and, and features that we need to actually achieve that. There's going to be a balance of both, but if we can, the whole evaluation piece has been around trying to fulfill the uh, opportunity of making sure we can uh, deliver as much value as we can with as minimal amount of resource and development, because um, I feel like that will get us as much further we, uh, as we can. So um, the things that gave most potential, uh, it's things that were interesting, like DocuSaurus did have a very uh, good scope to start with. Um, I the, the version one branch essentially uh, came to a point where it's now in maintenance mode and uh, we they're not looking to further further implement new features on top of that. Extensibility was very very poor. We can we could basically use the um, use the product out of the box. Uh, it had most of the features we were looking for, which is why I've ran, uh, this is on a scale of one to ten rated that at a nine because we've it does come with versioning. It does come with um, 
internationalization and integration for search, but customization on the whole is, is, pretty, uh, is pretty poor. So you end up with a, a base experience of which we may end up being stuck in, in, in a bit of a, um, uh, a development sort of uh, active maintenance mode. And uh, right now, uh, Docusaurus 2, which is the, the branch that I was basically evaluating recently and build a prototype on top of. Um, it doesn't have as many features uh, as at the get-go, but the whole extension model is basically uh, built in order to make it more customizable. Um, so give it maybe uh, you know a, f a couple of a couple of months where uh, people to contribute to that ecosystem, then might actually flesh out some of those plugins. But for now, there are only base level uh, integrations that I've found that will essentially get us uh, get us started. So. Um, and two of the core features that we do want to use are versioning and internationalization are currently not complete. Um, development does seem slow. There was a lot of promise around uh, this to be delivered um, like many months ago, and it doesn't seem like development is very active. Also on the forums, there's a few alphas getting released sporadically, but uh, it's, it's, it's not giving me a lot of hope that we should actually invest too much effort into that direction. Um, uh, this is reflected in the overall numbers of what we've got here. So. Uh, ranking things on like out of the box features, customizer customizability, um, developer experience being as in uh, for us to actually maintain and build on top of this product, um, uh, extensibility based on the plugins that um, or, or the plugin mo model that allows you to actually extend or, or or modify the actual framework and current extensions available. Um, so Docsaurus 2 is higher up in that, like, it's much more extensible, there's not many extensions yet, but uh, also the hope of which we, the active the development just seems pretty slow at, at, right at now, and I don't have a lot of confidence that we, we should go that way. Um, Gatsby is a different option, but it requires, it gives us the most amount of potential. It's like the biggest uh, um, open source sort of uh, serverless framework builder right now that's um, been funded. Um, uh, there's a lot of active development around it from different uh, different um, independent companies, but also as a platform level, they're doing a hosted version of it. So uh, it's a very, uh, like it's, it's definitely a, a very mature space right now. And I do feel like it's a lot of confidence in going that route. Um, the only downside is of course, this is a much more bespoke model. If we were to go this way, we'd end up having to build out uh, a lot of the core functionality, including like base search integration, uh, language and um, internationalization, we would need to figure out a way of doing versioning. There's nothing out of the box for that. We'd have to create our own theme that would basically support that with a nice typography and also make it uh, responsive and reactive. Um, so it, it's it's not really the primary choice for me right now because it feels like it it would require a lot more effort to get to the similar baseline of where we want to be with something like Viewpress, where I've um, finally got to and that actually started out as being um, a, a document a documentation. Um, platform to begin with, it was it was kind of written uh, as a, a, qu a quick sort of framework in order to boot up some documentation. Um, out of the box features wise, it's not um, it's got enough for what we want right now. There are a couple of core things missing that could cause some slight complication, but I do feel that there are some contributions out there that will help us. So uh, one of those being uh, of note is the versioning um, API versioning, so that we have to. Um, Come up with a slightly customized way of creating uh, versioning using using the product but uh, titanium have also started building up some plugins that we can contribute to that would actually help enable that feature um, but it does have internationalization um, it has a very nice uh, baseline theme um, it also has uh, additional features that we um, we will take advantage of such as uh, the ability to enable the app as a progressive web app which means you can do offline caching to start with so that you can, uh, if, if network connectivity is poor or if you get disconnected on a train journey on the way home, you'll still be able to read the docs and search through them um, on your mobile phone or whatever else you, you're using at the time. So some of those things we get for free are actually, you know, actually does give us a lot more hope. Um, it's very extensible, it's very mature right now. Um, in terms of the plugins, there's, there's plenty available, but it's not all specifically focused towards documentation. It's also got enough customization and a flexibility to break, basically branch out into doing individual pages and uh, API documentation as well. So uh, one area of focus that we do want to improve as, as the doc team is to make sure that we have a richer API uh, browsing experience, especially as we develop alternative versions, whether that in different languages or um, we, yeah, we have um, 
uh, various outputs, we want to make sure that we've got the op option to present that and maintain it with inside of the code base and um, uh, generate that out. Uh, we also did in, did sort of explore some of the, the hosted options as well. Um, uh, Gitbook was one to note because we do use it internally, but it's uh, it does provide a nice user experience, but we wouldn't be able to get the, the sort of uh, CLI integration and customization that we kind of want to get um, uh, from using an open source product or platform. Um, I've got obviously some more detailed overview notes that we've uh, put together, which is just more like the, these are the, the key areas of concern that I've been trying to evaluate this on and just making sure that we could uh, address most of those things and uh, and sort of figure our way through through the, uh, the, the maze of features. Um, so the proposal right now is basically, uh, I'm finishing this as the, this, this is the, the best in case sort of example of where I feel like we've got to at this point and it'll give us the, the maximum potential for the next phase. Um, uh, I personally want to invest the, the effort into something like a view press now and see if we can within a couple of weeks sprint really get as far as we want using the new uh, IA that the team have come up with as well. So we'll use that as a beta option uh, and start to build out the, the sort of um, documentation navigation and use that as a framework for testing for uh, the additional features that we'll add on. So um, as a team, we're going to break down obviously on Thursday and uh, get down, uh, get the individual features uh, and roadmap together so that we can uh, we can actually start to figure out um, like how what the what the progressive release plan will be for something like this. Um, uh, we won't need to do a ton of custom design work to start with. Um, I, it's that's a, it's a because the actual uh, framework itself does provide some nice um, uh, uh, default states, which means we can invest more time and effort into actually fleshing out the documentation with potentially visualizations and diagrams. Um, so being resource, um, not being too resource strapped on that is actually uh, an advantage for us as well. So um, th as you can see, summaries to do, that will be done today. I will get that finished. And then um, this will be posted up on GitHub uh, along with the additional resources, which we'll clean up. Um, this is also a prioritized feature set that we did as a team exercise. Um, we went through essentially uh, the core things that we'd like to have that will basically enable us to uh, progressively enhance the experience over time. Things that we can't do right now with the current uh, current output that we've got, and things that we'd like to implement and that would give us a, an ability to do so. So, uh, this was um, we we wrote up all the individual features, um, and then we did a, a poll sort of ranking exercise with each one, each of us, and then we just summarized them and, and sorted by priority. And this is essentially what the the list came out like. So, um, it's this is a cue a clue for potentially what features we will prioritize in our output, but then. The next transition is to take all of these, um, write them up as individual sort of issues, and essentially have some kind of voting exercise where we can enable the public to um, to suggest and um, and the company themselves to sort of vote vote on things that they think are, are important, um, because then that may uh, kind of steer navigation towards what we'll do next with um, uh, design. Um, so nothing too visual to show at this stage, and there's not no snazzy sl slides in this presentation, but <laughs> it's just more of an overview at the, at the point. But I think as we go further on, we'll start to focus our effort towards, um, uh, yeah, towards those releases. So um, uh, yeah, I welcome in can't input if you've got anything at this stage. But <laughs> this is this is me silent silent clapping. Yay! Hey. <laughs> That's awesome. I had. If it wasn't I had, at the um, end of the Q3 uh, last week, then I think I would have uh, put some nice slides together. Ah. It's nice charts and such, but we can read through uh, the, no, the no. ASCII artwork right now. Totally, totally not needed. I had um, so uh, two questions, one comment. Um, the comment is for anybody on this call. I will add a link to the um, to your your high level um, comparison um, at the top of the docs readme. Um, we've got a list of helpful artifacts, um, sort of foundational artifacts to our process for Q3 and Q4 work. So I'll add that link in there. Um, if you don't want to go digging through the notes, just go to the docs repo and you can find that document there. Um, two questions. Uh, question number one is um, for an uninitiate like me who is is sort of sort of a front end type person. Um, what's the the learning curve for um, getting my way around ViewPress if I speak some JavaScript and various sort of front endy stuff? Did you say that? Actually, Eric and I had a 
quick conversation about this earlier is that we want to try and isolate any person who wants to contribute to the documentation um, from having to do too much technical work. Um, it will be a case of downloading the actual core um, code base and then uh, basically contributing to that way, but you, it's, it's not much harder than writing a markdown file in a directory. Uh, there will be the ability to basically add, uh, to fork the repo and just add a new um, markdown file in a folder and then um, there will be some guides where we could actually uh, structure that to say give some people onboarding. Um, you know, if, if, if we go further down and we find that we don't get contribu contributions that way, then there will be an opportunity to make some kind of suggest this I, uh, um, UI uh, to enable that. And um, at least then we can get uh, the barrier to entry a bit lower. But uh, sweet, on the whole, it's, it's pretty smooth as you can get it without having to build out your own custom stack and ask people to do, like node versions and yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, sure. And if somebody just finds, if someone's just hanging out and they find a typo somewhere, they can just change a markdown exactly. document. And yeah, just, so like, everything will that be on the like, doesn't change at all. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, question number two was, um, timeline wise, you're talking about, and we've, we've talked a little bit about doing a sprint like right off the bat, just to sort of get a proof of concept in there. Uh, do you think it's reasonable to be able to have the new menu structure that Eric and I have been working on in something beatable that we can concept test around the 15th of the month? Yeah, I, I would say, uh, yes, it'd probably be a couple of days to actually get the boot uh, bootstrap model up and then uh, the repo itself won't be in, in, a, in perfect shape for like public consumption, but we can certainly sure. open up the doors to enable us okay. to put, the, put their stubs in. Um, that's okay. the intention really, it's just that we can work in a collaborative way now where I can get, if we've got this decision down and we're happy to move forward, I'd rather focus, because uh, it's a relatively short, quite condensed uh, Q4 that we want to make as much yeah. progress as possible with this. Um, yeah. uh, one discussion was like uh, to showcase all the prototypes that are built based on these existing versions, but then obviously that, that's an, an additional amount of effort involved yeah. to yeah. do that at the stage. So I'd rather yeah. uh, prioritize and focus that effort on to just working totally. with and see how far we get and if everyone's yep. in agreement then um, I'd be happy to. So really I mean judging you know, from from both from your summary analysis here and then just sort of like the conversations that we've had off and on over the last few weeks I mean it sounds like pretty there's not a lot of doubt related to this recommendation on anybody's part so I mean it sort of feels like the decision is we POC this over the next two or three weeks and then just 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 to be sure <laughs> and then we run with it is that sort of what the what you're operating under essentially yeah there will be some um slight bottlenecks that i guess we'll face as we get further down uh, in terms of structure and how we'll do internationalization but that won't come immediately um and there's also the added value uh, uh, added value if my words correct uh that uh, the filecoin docs are also written using a view press model so that should we all the model and insight that we get from this, we can then apply that on the whole if we build out some Perfect. kind of centralized documentation product in the future Perfect. for the company. Perfect. So it's quite nicely aligned with the efforts that we're doing so far. Um, and I feel like that's going to add, add more value. Um, Beautiful. Molly. Um, so I think the, I'm glad we were talking about like the ease of contribution because definitely the, the I make a PR in GitHub and that PR is picked up by CI and actions and auto deployed to the documentation site is so useful right now. And like, an, I think an immensely valuable way of getting contributors in the door. So I'd strongly push for us to um, re reset up that process instead of asking people to, you know, use, use the desktop, grab it, build it, ship it, like to instead where where changes are just changing markdown to um, enable those contribu contributions through the GitHub CI or um, interface. Absolutely. And um, I guess the other, the other piece here that I think is super important is that whatever solution we choose, we can host on IPFS. Um, and I think that's a, a pretty important component of our, all of our websites and something that we should make sure that um, I think our documentation right now can do so that we don't um, regress on that side. I, I would add one start and I know we've got two minutes. We might not be able to cover it all, but there might be a slight regression in order to add progress to start with. Um, so that right now there is a very long thread that's open uh, regarding the same sort of troubles that you have with most front end frameworks. We're adding a lot more rich functionality in the browser, which is currently what's not available with using a Hugo or such. Um, 
And the way the, way the frameworks get built out, there are some relative path issues that we will have to um, basically get around ourselves. I don't feel that has been impossible. I just feel like it's, as a priority, I'd rather make advances with the features and functionality and flexibility to start with and then come and tackle that head on uh, with the mindset that we'll make this work everywhere in the future. Um, in the meantime, yeah, we will absolutely be able to host it on IPFS and we'll be able to use the GitHub Actions and automations. Um, but I couldn't find any solution that uses either React or Gatsby um, to do that in an elegant way. Even the one, the Gatsby plugin that we've written is a, is a full, it rewrites all the paths after the build output. So we could do something very similar to do that. Um, um, but yeah, it, like, the, like for now, even the same with the Filecoin docs one that is hosted on uh, GitHub pages, just because it's, it integrates really seamlessly with that experience. So um, we can make it magic for the meantime, and then we'll improve it as we go along. And uh, yeah. I think that's I the, my, my recommendation is for, for launch, not necessarily for beta. We can in, get feedback exactly. and beta test on, on whatever is going to give us that useful right. point. Yeah. I want to segment <laughs> like user value added things with, you know, the things that we want to achieve as a whole. And I think it's a great demonstration for our technology and how we can do that. And um, we are fighting against a little bit of a education piece in the web that we also should be ahead. So I think that piece is like is a good challenge for us to go through because then we'll understand the pain that others are facing as well. Um, but yeah, overall, I think we're, we're in a good space. Awesome, awesome. Well, I know we're, we're hitting up at the end of our time, so I want to respect everybody's time. I know several of us have another meeting to run off to. Thank you so much again, Chris. Um, anybody from the outside world who is not on this call right now, uh, keep an eye on the Docs GitHub repo over the next week or so. You're going to start seeing all of the sort of large-scale stuff for Q4 start getting built into more discrete piece parts. So if there's anything that catches your eye, please comment, hit one of us up. Um, you know, we, we, we love help and we love collaboration. So keep an eye on that. We are, I think all of us super, super, super excited to kick off this work. So, so and yeah. The um, world has experience in this area. Please come along and say hi as well. So love yes, to yes. have you on board. <laughs> all right, world. Well, have a, have a wonderful week. I will get this up on, on the YouTubes real soon now and um, see you all next week, if not sooner. Thank you very much for joining us.